and you raise the temperature, what would we expect that to do the, to the rate of the reaction? Increase, Increase the rate. It's kind of common sense. We know from ordinary experience that things, more interesting things happen when we increase the temperature, right? Uh, I guess that's the whole basis of your kitchen, right? Um, cooking is getting chemical reactions to happen. Well, you don't get the chemical reactions that happen by putting things in your freezer. You do it by putting them on your stove, right? Because higher temperature gets more reactions to happen. Um, sometimes textbooks use a good example. Um, on the other hand, when, when food spoils, that also is largely due to chemical reactions. So how do you slow down the rate at which your food spoils? Put it in the fridge. Lower the temperature so the chemical reactions don't happen as fast. Of course, a lot of spoiling comes from bacteria, but they spoil food using their internal chemical reactions. Okay. Um, so it's common sense that increasing the temperature increases the rate, and decreasing the temperature decreases the rate. So that's one of the main things you guys were focusing on last time. Um, now, how does that relate to our rate laws? Remember that our rate laws look like this. Something like this, perhaps, for a generalized rate law. These are the types of rate laws that we talked about before. Well, if increasing the temperature increases the rate, it must be affecting something in this equation. Well, what's it affecting? Yeah, the rate constant. It wouldn't make sense for it to affect A here, because this is supposed to be the concentration of something. Well, concentrations do affect rates, but they're totally different things from temperatures. Just making something hotter doesn't change the concentrations. Uh, and these exponents are parameters that are constant for a certain type of reaction. So what we're really saying here <coughs> is that, so does increasing the temperature increase or decrease the rate constant? So that's what we really should have said. Increase in the temperature increases the rate constant and thereby increases the rate. That's why, uh, so a uh, couple of sections ago, you guys learned how to figure out these rate laws. You learned how to figure out this exponent and how to figure out the rate constant from the experimental data. But if you look at the experimental data, it always says something like experimental data gathered at 25 degrees Celsius or 30 degrees Celsius. They have to say what temperature it was gathered at because at a different temperature, you would have gotten different data and a different rate constant. Okay. Um, so let's try to get an equation that relates to these things. Um, so there should be a positive relationship between these. Uh, let's see, are we quite ready for this? So um, let's say, um, Now, what about n? Is an n supposed to be somewhere that's not? So let's say we increase the temperature. If we increase the temperature, um, so someone was saying that they, they were remembering that there's supposed to be a negative sign here. Yeah. So let's see whether that's right or not. Well, if we increase the temperature, what would be the effect of that on this fraction? Because the temperature is in the denominator. And what would be the effect of that on this fraction? If this fraction decreases, what happens to this fraction? Well, notice that this is the negative of this. So do these two fractions move in the same direction or opposite directions? Opposite. The smaller this is, the bigger this is. That's the result of this negative sign. Um, for example, suppose that you have x equals negative y. Well, suppose that x is huge. Suppose that x is 1 million. Well, then y would be tiny. It would be negative 1 million. So by small, I mean far to the left on the number line. And by big, I mean far to the right on the number line. When there's a negative relationship between things, they move in different directions. Um, so if this is getting smaller and smaller, what's happening to this fraction? It's getting bigger and bigger. Well, if this is getting bigger and bigger, 
what would happen to this expression? Is that what we would want? Do we want this, temper this increase in temperature to make this get bigger? Yes, because this is the K. Okay, so if you ever forgot whether this should be negative or not, you should be able to figure it out using this logic. Um, we're not going to do proofs together in the tutoring, but I think something a student should always do is make sure that the equation makes sense in terms of directions. This is telling us that when the temperature goes up, the rate constant goes up. It's just not so obvious because there's all these little complications, but here's how we can work that out. So we're not going to prove this, but this does make common sense because it says that the bigger the temperature, the bigger the rate constant, which would lead to a bigger rate. Okay, this is called the Arrhenius equation. The Arrhenius equation. Okay. Um, now, the basic model for how reactions happen is reactions happen when the starting materials collide with each other. However, not all the collisions make the reaction happen. Sometimes the reaction happens and sometimes it doesn't because it, it takes a certain amount of energy for the reaction to happen, and that's called the activation energy. The reagents have to collide with enough energy to satisfy that activation energy, and then the reaction can happen. That's another term in this equation. The activation energy affects what the rate of the reaction is going to be. So roughly speaking, the activation energy is how much energy you have to put in for the reaction to happen. That's a little bit rough, but roughly speaking, the activation energy is how much energy you have to put in. Uh, how much en it's how much energy the colliding molecules have to have in order for the reaction to happen. How much energy the colliding molecules have to have in order for the reaction to happen. We'll be more precise about how that works in a couple minutes. So. If you have a large activation energy, would you expect from common sense that that would lead to a high rate or a low rate? H high or low? low? Yeah, that's right. Because this is saying that most of the collisions won't have enough energy in order for the reaction to happen. So there should be an inverse relationship here. Well, does that match this equation? Is this equation saying that there's an inverse relationship between the activation energy and the rate constant? Yes, because there's a negative here. So the bigger the activation energy is, the smaller this exponent is going to be. And a small exponent will give us a small k and a small rate. So this makes sense for both t and the activation energy. Big activation energies have a different effect than big temperatures. That's why one's in the numerator and one's in the denominator. A big activation energy slows you down, and a big temperature speeds you up. OK, so that part of the equation makes sense as well.